the promised land. My laws are right in all the time. Oh, this is all you do. It is all you say. My laws are right in all the time. Oh, this is all you do. It is all you say. My laws are right in all the time. Calm down. Calm down. My Lord, calm down. My laws are right in all the time. And take me up to wear a crown. My laws are right in all the time. Oh, this is all you do. It is all you say. My laws are right in all the time. Oh, this is all you do. Yes, all you say, my laws are right in all the time. My laws are right in, my laws are right in, my laws are right in all the time. Good morning, everyone. You're welcome to our service this morning. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for coming. And we also want to recognize the presence of um, our internet audience. We pray that as God is blessing us here, he will bless you wherever you are located too. This is Apostolic Faith Church, and we are located at number 13, Penn Hill Road, and that's in Bexley, DA5. 3EP in London. Um, you're welcome to worship with us anytime that you come around this area, or if you lo live locally, come and share in this blessing of the Lord with us. We want to thank God for his presence um, among us here, and we also want to recognize the effort of the choir. Um, the, we first had that um, short pre organ prelude, which was followed by the choir singing, The King is Coming, and then we had that beautiful quartet by a male um, choristers, which is my laws is a right, um, my lords are writing, um, and is hearing whatever we say in secret, whatever we um, think in our heart. The Lord is always listening and is hearing. May the Lord please make our hearts clean. May He bless us this morning. We are going to now sing together, and the first song we're singing is from CGS. 111, that is CGS 111, and Bratui Ajayi will be our songs leader. God bless you as you sing. Saying verses 1, 2, and 5. 1, 2, and 5. When we walk with the Lord.
walk by his side in the way. Amen. Now let's um, turn to 122. Glorious things of thee are spoken. Amen. Zion city of our God. Yeah. We start now, but very soon it will be reality. Yeah. We will actually walk the streets of Zion. Amen. Glorious things of thee are spoken. We'll sing happily through the three verses of this song, sitting down. <laughs> Sing for the 325, 325. Come, ye that love the Lord. Um, come, ye that love the Lord. That's the one we wanted, not the um, who knows. Do you know where that is? S is an S. H two three, S S N S H two three, come ye that love the Lord. We're marching on to Zion, beautiful city of God. Okay. S S N S H two three. That's it. Come ye that love the Lord, and let your joys be known. Join in the song with sweet accord. We'll sing all the verses of the song after the intro. <laughs>
our song before prayer is 214. CGS 214. Jesus calls us over the tumult of our life's wild, restless sea. Day by day, his sweet voice sounded, saying, Christian, follow me. As of old, apostles heard it by the Galilean lake, turned from home and toil and kindred, living all for his dear sake. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's gotten storm, from each idol that will keep us, saying, Christian, love me more. Amen. We're going to sing all the verses of this song. Verse 5, we shall sing standing. After that, we shall be led in prayer. in prayer, Brian Sikak will come to lead us. Our gracious and most heavenly Father, we bless your name. Amen. We thank you because you're the light of the world. Yes. The son of righteousness yes. with healing in your wings. Amen. And in your healing we are here. Yes. Lord, we thank you for your provision throughout the week, throughout the year. Lord, you've been faithful. We are can, we can gladly say that you have been our God. Oh, yes. For this, O oh Lord, accept our thanks. Amen. We thank you for what you are doing in our midst, that you can inspire our hearts to know that all of life will be over, and we shall be with you in the azure above, that we shall walk the golden street. Amen. Even when we don't have gold in this world, we shall walk that city that is fair, Lord, blessed be your name. Amen. For you said, we, when we walk with you in the light of your word, in that fellowship suite, we shall partake with you. Amen. And so you have gathered us, O oh Lord, that we might be tuned to walk in your light. Yes. We pray, O oh Lord God Almighty, that you will speak to our hearts today. Amen. We commit, O oh Lord, your servant into your mighty hand. That you make him an oracle Amen. towards which your word will be spoken. Amen. Those glorious words that the world will deride. Amen. But you said only Zion children know. Lord, let us know it. Amen. Open our hearts, O oh God. Amen. Incline our hearts to wisdom. Amen. That in hearing we will do. Amen. Blessed be your name Amen. for this day. Thank you because we know you will help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Yeah. Sign 
things of the times are everywhere and there's a brand new feeling in the air keep your eyes upon the eastern sky lift up your head redemption draweth nigh years of time have come and gone since I first heard it told how that Jesus would come again someday if back then it seemed so real then I just can't help but feel how much closer his coming is today signs of the times are everywhere and there's a brand new feeling in the air keep your eye upon the eastern sky lift up your head redemption and strife on every hand and violence fills our land still some people doubt he'll come again but the word of God is true he'll redeem his chosen few don't lose hope soon Christ Jesus will descend signs of the times are everywhere and there's a brand new feeling sky lift up your head lift up your head lift up your head redemption draweth Bible reading this morning, we're going to be taking this from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 1, all the way down to 17. Ephesians, chapter 5, from verse 1 down to verse 17. 1. Be therefore followers of God, as dear children. 2. And walk in love, as Christ also had loved us, and had given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savour. Three, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no, that no whoremonger 
nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of, and of God. Six, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Seven, be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye sometimes, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Nine, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Eleven, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Thirteen, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth manifest is light. Yes. Wherefore he said, Awake! Thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Amen. 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. 16. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Last verse, verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Prepare. 
Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 24, and we'll be reading from verse 42 to verse 44. Matthew chapter 24, from verse 42 to verse 44. Watch therefore, for ye know not what are your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. 44. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. The message this morning is um, essentially for Christians, um, those that profess faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, if there is anyone here this morning or that may be hearing us over the internet and is not yet a Christian, there is provision for such people to seek the Lord and reconcile with the Lord today because the coming of the Lord is imminent. Um, so the topic of our message this morning is Christian, walk carefully. Christian, walk carefully. You know, there is um, no point in maybe coming to church and just warming ourselves up and having a feel-good attitude. Um, somebody said some time ago that in certain places, sinners go there um, soaked in sin and they leave the place wet um, from the sweat of their dancing or their activities. And nothing um, about sin is mentioned. This place, by the grace of God, as one of our leaders will say, is a place where souls are manufactured for the kingdom of God. Um, we are more interested in your salvation than any other thing. Um, your coming is very much appreciated, but by the grace of God, when the rapture shall take place, we want to see that you make it too. Yeah. And that should be the whole essence of your coming here. Yeah. I think it's sister, it was Sister Florence, our Sunday school teacher this morning, that mentioned that in this place, we teach and preach the whole truth of the word of God. This is not a place where we massage sin and we massage people's egos um, so that they will not leave, so that they will keep coming. No, we, by the grace of God, will speak the whole truth of God so that everyone is accountable for whatever their, um, uh, uh, the, the, the result of their action may be. But it's our plea this morning that everyone here will be rapture ready Amen. and will all be raptured when the Lord shall come. Amen. Amen. You know, it's a privilege to be a Christian. Yeah. It's not something that is um, very cheap. When a sinner comes to the realization of the fact that he's heading for hell, and then he decides that he wants to change his course, he wants to um, be on God's side, and then he repents of his sins, he confesses them to God and asks for forgiveness, and God forgives him. You know, that feeling that follows, that assurance that follows, is not something that money can give. It is not something that um, if a parent can give unto any child. As a matter of fact, there is no parent that can give an assurance to a child that a child will go to heaven. That you know what, my dear child, when Jesus comes, you will go with him. And there is no child that can do that for a parent either. Everyone is on their own. Everyone will give an account of themselves unto God. And the truth is that if you have been coming to this church, you just do not have any excuse before God. It doesn't matter if it is only once you have come, or it is only twice, or you only come once a year. The fact remains that whenever you come, we don't cease from talking about salvation and the need for you to come out of sin and be ready for heaven. So for you um, to be here today, by the grace of God, is according to God's plan. And as I said, to be a Christian is a high calling. 
it is not um, something that is very, very cheap. We need to appreciate the fact that it cost Jesus Christ his blood for us to be redeemed from our lives of sin and be called Christians. Let us see First John chapter 3. First John, and we'll be reading from chapter 3, verse 1 down. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we be called the sons of God. Therefore the word knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Too beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Verse 3. And every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Amen. It is a great privilege to be a Christian, but every privilege comes with its own responsibility. Yeah. And so as Christians, we have what I called a duty of purity. Hmm. If you are a child of God, God expects that you live a life that is transparent, a life that is beyond reproach, a life that cherishes purity because God is pure. Yes. Whether as male or as female, young or old, so long as we have attained the age of accountability, the Lord expects that we don't fall and rise, fall and rise as Christians. He expects that we live a consistent Christian life, a life that is void of sin and unrighteousness. There is no sinning Christian. If anyone is still falling and rising from their life of sin, they are yet to know Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that um, the, the, the seed of God remains in his children. And because the seed of God remains in us, we cannot sin. So if you are still finding yourself in sin and unrighteousness, if you still cherish your past life, the life that you were leading before you became a Christian, if you still cherish that life, if you still um, seem to miss that lifestyle, and it appeals more to you than your current lifestyle as a Christian, then there is something that is fundamentally wrong. That first John chapter 3, verse 3 that we read says, Every man that has this hope, and you can say every woman that has this hope, what hope? That is the hope of eternal life, of being a Christian, because every Christian must have this hope of eternal life in them, that everyone that has that hope in them purifies themselves. That means it is possible for such lives to be contaminated with sin. But you have a duty to keep your life pure before God yeah. at all times. Yeah. God's help is always there yeah. and available. Yeah. Yeah. And God will grant it at our request from time to time. Sure. Holiness is required of us at all times. Mm -hmm. It's not only when we are studying book 13 of our Sunday school. We must live in the consciousness of the coming of Jesus Christ that can happen any moment of the day. There is no certainty that we are going to come back here in the evening, not to even talk of next week's Sunday. So we must always live with this at the back of our mind, that the coming of the Lord is imminent, yeah. and it can come any time. Yeah. Yeah. There is no other thing that qualifies us for rapturing with the Lord than the life of holiness. It is not the amount of activities that we do. The teacher this morning mentioned it, that in the world you may be, re you may be rewarded for um, the, 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 the quantity or the volume of work that you do. You may be termed a foreman because you do more than every other person and you even, in addition to your own job, you oversee other people. But it is not the same thing with God. What God is looking for is faithfulness. And it is living a holy life, a life that is void of sin and unrighteousness. Yeah. The Bible says in the um, um, text that we read, let no man deceive you with vain words. Don't let the devil give you any um, 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 uh, fake assurance of heaven. If you are living in sin, 
God is no respecter of person. It doesn't matter who you are. God is no respecter of any person. The judgment of God over sin is certain. And you don't want that judgment to come upon you. Jesus commands us in that opening text to be watchful. Because we do not know the time of his return. And if Jesus has said we should be watchful, it means there is a possibility of one not making it. Because there will be those that are not watchful for the coming of the Lord. They may be professors of Christianity, professors of faith in Jesus Christ. They may even be preachers. They may be teachers. They can be anything. But for failing to watch for the coming of the Lord, that very that careless moment, that very little moment, may just be the time that Jesus will come. Somebody was saying, I, I was attending a program um, this last week, and there somebody was talking about um, him being caught in a traffic offense. He said he was in the front of a school, and you know in the front of a school you have this zigzag sign, which means you cannot park there. But he just parked there briefly to pick his wife. He said his wife was already approaching. He was just there for two minutes, and the police caught him. That careless moment, it could be that he has been driving for 30 years and he had never been caught by the police for committing any offense, but that careless moment came. And for us as Christians, that would be too risky because that is risking eternal life. So as Christians, we want to ensure that we are watchful as the Lord has said. And Jesus can and is willing to keep us, but we have a duty to keep close to him. The consequences of missing the rapture are better imagined. Actually, one shouldn't just think about it. One shouldn't think about it. It is a time that those that are raptured will be joyful forever. But those that are left behind will regret that time forever. Mm. Somebody said that um, if one will have an idea, a, the faintest idea of what hell is like, you will not even want your dog to go there. Mm. Yeah. I heard the story of um, a criminal that was condemned to death. And while he was awaiting being executed, that a chaplain was made to pray for all of those that were to be executed. And when he got to this man, he told him, young man, you need to repent so that your soul will not go to hell. And the man that was at stake there that was waiting to die said, sir, I'm not sure you know what you're talking about. If you know the implication of my soul going to hell, I think you would not hold it lightly the way you have held it. The way you have spoken these words, I think it will be heavier than that. I believe that that man was beginning to perceive that an end, his end, was at hand. And the moment of repentance was about slipping away from him. And he would not have the opportunity again. And he would have had an idea of what hell would be like. You don't want to miss the rapture. It is worth giving everything for. Let the world call you a fool. The Bible says that the cross, to the preaching of the cross, is foolishness to those that perish. But to we that are saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. The preaching of the cross may be foolishness to the rest of the world. At work, when you do certain things because you are Christians, they may laugh, laugh you to derision. But wait, your moment of glory is around the corner. Amen. Because when Jesus shall come, he will take you away with him. Amen. But please, walk carefully. You know, the way to heaven, I love when it comes to mind what our veterans in this gospel have said in the past. I heard this ever before I became a member of Apostolic Faith. 
that it was a famous saying in apostolic faith that the bed to heaven, if you want to go to heaven, that you are not going to lay on a, a feather mattress. You know, feather mattress is usually very, very soft. That you won't lay on a mattress of feathers to go to heaven. The way to heaven, they are, they are paved with a, a lot of ups and downs. There are thorns, there are all kinds of things there. And it will take you beyond having a sat nav to navigate the way to heaven. You must hold on tenaciously to the hand, the clothes, the legs, the neck, the head. Every part of Jesus Christ for you to make it to heaven. Because there are forces that we are contending with that don't want anyone to make heaven. You must always recall to mind that Satan was not created by God as Satan. God did not create Satan to go to hell. Satan was one of the angels well favored with God in heaven. But he lost that opportunity because of his pride. And because he lost that opportunity, he does not want anyone to make it to heaven. That is the kind of force that we are contending with. And there is no one here that is as experienced as Satan is. He has brought down many Christians. Many big men and big women of God. People that have sent many souls to eternity with Jesus Christ through their sermons, through their teachings, through their writings, through their prayers. And just for one careless moment, that's it, and they are gone. You must have heard, if you have never read this sermon, where people will say, remember Lord's wife. Lot's wife did not plan to be a pillar of salt. But because Lot pitched his tent by the side of Sodom and Gomorrah, the fate that became Sodom and Gomorrah almost befell Lot, but for the mercy of God. But you know, the mercy of God is always there, but it might not avail for everyone at all times. There's a time that God says enough is enough. The Bible says that the day the righteous commits sin, commits iniquity, the Bible says that all his past righteousness will be forgotten. God is a consuming fire. My dear brother, my dear sister, walk carefully. Walk carefully. Remember at all times, that the way to heaven is not a way that you walk anyhow. You don't just feel like, yes, I am there now and I can do anything. People that watch their weight, maybe that are overweight, and then they put themselves on one program or the other, and maybe it works for them and they lose weight. They are happy that, yes, they are now moderate in size, but if they become careless, they will pile up that weight again. The sins that you have forsaken, all the unrighteousness that you have repented of, they are still hanging around there. They're waiting for you to come back. If you go back and you pile them up again, your ending will be worse than your beginning. Christian, walk carefully. The devil is our arch enemy. Let's look at um, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, be sober. Christians are meant to be sober. Christians are meant to be sober. We don't laugh at everything the world laughs at. It's not everything that amuses the world that amuses us. In fact, sometimes when those around you are laughing, you are crying. It says, be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. When a lion roars, all animals shake wherever they are. Everyone will find their level. 
Satan is like a roaring lion. He's always going around looking for that careless Christian. May the Lord help us Amen. that we will walk this way carefully Amen. and not fall in the hand of our enemy. Amen. Amen. Just imagine what it will be like. And God forbid that that happens to anyone. Amen. Someone that has prayed, that has um, 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 testified in the public of the defeat of Satan and sin in their life. Someone that has said that they have got the, the victory over sin, over Satan, and suddenly he's now in charge of Satan in hell. I mean, on, under the command of Satan in hell. What do you think Satan would do with him? You don't want to go there. You don't even want to smell it at all. I, I don't even want Jesus to take me near to go and look at what is happening to those that are there because I will fear so that I don't um, just sleep and fall over. I know, of course, he can rescue me, but I don't even want to see what is happening there. Don't pitch your tent near Sodom and, so and Gomorrah. You know, some people, they like pushing boundaries. They like pushing boundaries. They like pushing boundaries because there is no one to call them a sinner or to rebuke them or stop them from doing whatever they are doing for the Lord. Um, they just feel they have the liberty to do whatever they want and they keep pushing boundaries and keep, keep pushing boundaries. And you know what um, that illustration that Jesus gave of um, a man that had a garden and um, sowed good seed, but evil seed, also bad seed, also grew up there. And the, 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 um, his servant said, let's go and uproot the bad ones. He said, leave them. Let both good and bad, let them grow up together. Maybe that is what the Lord is doing with you. Just giving you a long rope to pull. But the time is coming when the Lord will say, enough is enough. Don't pitch your tent with the devil. The devil is our enemy. He's not a friend. He will cause you discouragement. Satan will come. And he will ask you the reason of the hope that is in you. The devil will come, he will lure you to sin, and he will give you that assurance that don't worry, everybody does it. Everybody does it. Don't believe what they tell you in the public. It's a lie. They all know how they settle themselves. That is not true. The Bible says that he that commits unrighteousness is unrighteous. And there is no unrighteousness with God. Christian... Walk carefully. If you fall into sin, don't let the enemy assure you that you are still the same. Remember Samson. After that, he disclosed the source of his strength to Delilah, and his hair was scraped. The Bible says he woke up as usual. And it felt like, yes, the energy, the strength, and everything was still there. Mm. He didn't know that he had gone. Mm. Someone once said that if the Spirit of God operates in an environment for a moment, and then he leaves, he said for years you will still be feeling the impact mm. of that activity of the Spirit of God. However, he has since left. And the fact that you still have a feel of the impact of what the Holy Ghost did in that place in the past, you will think that the Holy Ghost is still there. That essentially explains the lives of many Christians. And the enemy is putting them on a false scale. And giving them false assurance. Our teacher this morning said, if we cannot judge small matters among ourselves, how do we hope to reign with Jesus Christ and be co-judges with him in his kingdom? God is not unrighteous. If there are quarrels and disagreements between a parent and a child, a child and a parent, a husband and a wife, a wife and a husband, or a member of the church and a minister, 
or among um, um, co-workers in the church, and we cannot resolve it. And I cannot accept that I am wrong, even though I am right. And I decide to claim my right, and I, I, I am insisting. I, I learned something new just recently. The person said, go and read the highway code. He says the highway code says nobody has the right of the way. I heard that for the first time. You know when you come to a stop, you know, you uh, uh, maybe, uh, um, no, your side is not a stop side. Your side is to go through. The, his other side is the stop side. You will say, I have the right of the way. So you want to enter before him. They say the highway code says, nobody says you have the right of the way. Only move if the road is clear. The traffic light is showing green. It is showing red to the other person. Who has the right of the road? Is the one on whose side the green light is. But the highway code says, only proceed if the way is clear. Don't let the devil give you a false assurance. God does not tolerate sin. It doesn't matter how little it may be. Christian, walk carefully. Apart from the devil that is there that is planting, your own self, your body, is an enemy True. that you must, you must deal with yeah. at all times. Yeah. Let's look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 3. Galatians chapter 6, verse 3. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. How many Christians think that they are something when they are actually nothing? There may be nobody to point to them to say, look, you are an empty vessel. Yeah. Because everyone is careful. You don't be, who has made you a judge? God is the judge. But you know what? That Christian himself we know that he is an empty vessel. This sound that I'm producing is the sound of an empty barrel. If there was something inside my barrel, he would not be producing this sound. But he would tell everyone, oh, praise God. <laughs> the Lord saved me 55 years ago. And then it was beside my bed that he sanctified me. And then he baptized me with Holy Ghost while I was in the traffic driving my car to work. <laughs> and ever since then, the Lord has been keeping me. God knows those that are his. Christian, walk carefully. There is danger on this way. Hebrews 12, from verse 14 to verse 17, tells us, Say, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. You think it is easy to follow peace with all men? It's not an easy thing. When you are not at fault, somebody else is at fault. And the Bible says you should still follow peace with all men. It says, looking diligently, lest any man fall, fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. Hey, brother, sister, don't allow the root of bitterness to spring up in your heart. <laughs> Whatever that person has done, Whatever the offense is, yeah. seek peace yeah. Yeah. at all costs. Amen. Amen. Seek peace at all costs. Amen. It Amen. may cost you your position in the church. Yeah. Yeah. It may make you to lose your friends. Yeah. My brother, my sister, yeah. seek peace at all costs. The Bible says, as much as it lies in you, mm. live peaceably with all men. Mm. Ah, you think the Bible is joking when it says that? The Bible recognizes the fact that you, there will be trouble in your flesh. So your ego will say, no, how can I take that? No, I cannot. Hey, it could be when you are just saying that, no, Jesus will come. <laughs> if Jesus doesn't come, you may just suddenly have a heart attack. And before help comes, they will think you are pretending. Hey, don't mind him. It's a lie. It's a lie. He will say, get, get, get up there. <laughs> before they know it, before they call the ambulance, it's gone. And that's the end of it. There is no coming back to say, God, I'm sorry. That is it. It is done and it is over. It says, and thereby many be defied. 
um, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright just for the sake of getting that job, you told a little lie. Sold your birthright. It says, for you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. That you have started the race to heaven is no guarantee that you will make it through. You must keep close to Jesus at all times. In my language, it, they do say that somebody that doesn't, a, a bad dancer, someone that doesn't know how to dance properly, you don't go too far away from the drummer. You, you keep close to the drummer so that at his, as he's drumming, as he's talking with his drum and saying, take left, right, yeah, you are hearing it. But if you leave the drummer, you go and stay a mile away from him, you won't hear the drum very the drum beat very well. And because you are a poor dancer, when they say right, you take left. When they say left, you take right. Who knows how to dance very well on this way to heaven? Let us all keep close to the, dance, to, to the, to the drummer. Our drummer is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let's keep close to him so that we are hearing the sound of the drum at all times and we are not missing our steps. The Bible enjoins us in Romans chapter 12, verse 18, that we must do our utmost to live at peace with all men because it recognizes the fact that offenses will come. Yeah. Hey, yeah. brethren will offend you. They will offend you. Yes. <clears throat> but you have a duty to keep those offenses at bay. You know, I'm, I'm not going to look that way. This offense, I'm not reckoning with it. In fact, it doesn't exist. Have, have you um, spoken to someone before? You have a conversation and the person says, this conversation never existed. You didn't hear anything from me. What they are saying, it's not like you didn't really have the conversation. They are just saying, don't quote me. Please, let this conversation die here. When that offense comes, you just, you know, this offense never even existed at all. That should be our attitude Amen. if you must reign Amen. with Christ. Amen. Apart from the devil and, the, and ourselves, we also have the world to contend with. Mm. I said earlier on, don't pitch your tent near Sodom and Gomorrah. Don't push boundaries. Some people, they are very happy to say, so and so person is doing it. Um, this and that person is doing it. There was somebody um, some years back, we were together in the church. And we all knew that this brother wasn't standing very well. And by the grace of God, we did our utmost to help him. Suddenly, we found that he had a second wife. And when we spoke to him, what was his response? He said, the place that God put David, let him put me. <laughs> you want to wait and, and, and get the faith of David, uh, you can't enjoy it. You better pray that the place where God has put Paul, let him put you there. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. It says in Johnny's, I want you to know that in the household of God, it is not everyone that is a Christian. I told you at the beginning, repeating what the teacher said at the Sunday school this morning, that we are not here to deceive anyone. It is clearly stated in the Bible. Jesus himself said it, that it is not everyone that calls him Lord, Lord, that shall inherit his kingdom. What does that mean? Who are those that will call Jesus Christ, Lord, Lord? Will you not find them in the household of faith? That's where you find them. But Jesus said it's not all of them. Hey, don't be one of those people that won't make heaven. There are prophecies in the Bible, positive ones and negative ones. I have resolved in my mind. Only the positive ones will be fulfilled in my life. Amen. And I pray that that will be your choice too. Amen. 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 The Bible said that Jesus will come, he will die. But does the Bible say... It was uh, Judas that must betray him. You don't know, Judas chose to. He could have remained a disciple, an apostle of Jesus Christ, and that prophecy would still have been fulfilled. But it wouldn't have been Judas if he didn't choose to. So the choice is yours, either to make heaven or not.
to make it. In 2 Corinthians 11, 26, this is Paul's testimony. He says, in journeys, often in Paris of waters, in Paris of robbers, in Paris by my own countrymen, in Paris by the heathen, in Paris in the city, in Paris in the wilderness, in Paris in the sea, in Paris among false brethren. There are false brethren. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. But you know, by their fruit, we shall know them. When they come around you and they are yearning you to be part of their backbiting, <laughs> run for your dear life. Run for your dear life. When they are at home, uh, you know that song that um, our male quartet sang, God bless them. It says, before you say, and all that you are thinking, my Lord is writing everything. So you can hide the thought of your heart from man, but you cannot hide it from God. So the world is not just the world out there. We are talking about among brethren also. They will come. They will lure you into sin. They will, they will ask you to come and join them. They have compromised the standard of the gospel. And they are looking for other compromisers. People that will join them. They will see your dressing and say, ah, uh, ah, uh, this is out fashioned. Come on, it's not that difficult. Don't follow them. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. They will speak all kinds of evils about powers. Be it powers in the church or in the secular world. Don't be part of it. Run for your dear life. Christian, walk carefully. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 1, try the spirits whether they are of God. It is not everything you hear that is the truth. When somebody will come to lure you and misinterpret a particular part of the Bible to you and use it to want to push, to, to take you along, drag you into the sin that they are in, don't follow them. Try the spirit. Is this of God or not? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. That means there are false professors of faith in Jesus. Christian, walk carefully. They will persuade you to join them in backbiting, in dressing like the world. They will condemn your standard and standing for the truth. They will condemn it. They will challenge you. They will ask you, how many of you are left in the gospel? that still keep this kind of standard that you are, you are brandishing all over the place. The gospel has moved forward. The gospel has not moved forward. It is where it has always been. Don't join them. The fact that they are in majority does not mean that what they are doing is right. Christian, walk carefully. That is very, very important. They will criticize you. They will count and raise imaginary offenses against you just to make sure that they, they, they grieve the spirit of God in you. They will, they will pen, pen, pen down all kinds of things and rumors against you. They may slander you and attempt to pull you down. But see that you resist them by yielding no grounds. Don't yield grounds. If you need to apologize, apologize. You know that sometimes apology does not mean acceptance of guilt. It's just... Uh, let peace reign. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Did you say it was you I mentioned? I, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. Please pardon me. Pray for me that God will, will help me. Next time I will be wiser. I won't speak that way. <laughs> you want to call a madman the bridegroom so that he will leave the way and you can go. <laughs> it is important as Christians. But don't, give, don't yield grounds to sin. You must be ready to stand up to sin and unrighteousness. 1 John 2, verses 15 and 16. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Finally, brethren, in John chapter 13, verse 17. Jesus himself said it. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. 
Jude 24 and 25. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with a exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Father, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, Amen. both now and ever. Amen. I invite you to the altars of prayers. Come and seek the face of God. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message of life. The word has come to us, O oh Lord, as we go on our knees. Help us in all aspects of our life that we will walk carefully and come into the Azure above. As you are waiting for us, O oh Lord, help us and prepare us today. For we pray in Jesus' name.